Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to another episode of The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. As you already know, we say it as it is here. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. I'm starting the discourse by bringing to the fore a dire need for change of power. I'm saying our Nigerian youths are capable enough. Treasure the Amazon. Reminds us that a hungry man is an angry man. That is a truism, though. The same controversial Jumi Jumoke is lecturing us today, and our topic is how to handle social media depression. With the barrage of events in the past weeks, you better keep your pen and paper close. In another light, Liberos is not throwing punches today, but is simply requesting our leaders to talk with us rather than talking at us. I hope he won't ruffle feathers. Last but not the least, the gentle but hard-punching Chuka advocates for a complete overhaul of our government system to ensure transparency. We all must unite behind the quest for a better Nigeria. Allow me to lead the way right after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. I've heard a couple of youths chant this. The power of the people is stronger than the people in power. And so I'm saying to the youths, go for power. There are about 60 million Nigerians between the ages of 18 and 39. That number is roughly twice the combined total votes called by the two major parties, APC and PDP, in the last presidential election. If democracy is a game of numbers, then I'm sure you can already glean where I'm heading. Let us walk together into a dream of what is possible in 2023. The background to this is that it is most unlikely that the establishment people who have been leading us and are the same people who put together this suboptimal Nigerian system will be the ones to transform this nation. To fundamentally change Nigeria will require fresh minds with fresh thinking who are willing to question anything and everything about the status quo and are ready to positively disrupt 60-year-old systems and institutions. It will not be a walk in the park. I am aware that we had some youths in government over the years who were ashamed to leadership. But I'm also not unaware of the fact that they operated in a system old and strong enough to easily eat them up for dinner. So we must change that old order. And an important inroad to getting this started is to shoot for power through the ballot. Youth today don't even have voters' cards. 
Up until now, the younger generation have been told they don't have the political structure. Essentially, this is a challenge to the capacity of this generation to organize itself across the entire nation, from urban to rural, Lagos to Yusufari in Yobe, and Biokuru in Akwaibo. Is it true that the youth who put together the nonviolent NSAS protest in Lagos cannot organize themselves across Nigeria? Or is it just an enemy's report to keep them off? Any close observer of the undiluted NSAS protest in Lagos we attest to the excellence of the organization. And if they could pull that off in Lagos, I'm of the strong conviction that they can mobilize youths everywhere across the country onto an electoral course for a better Nigeria. Oh, what about funding? Youths cannot fund an election, can they? I think the NSAS funding has demystified the story that the youths cannot raise necessary financing to pursue their convictions. Just to take a peek into what is possible, if only 10%, just 10% of a 50 million youth population can muster 5,000 contributions each, the answer is 25 billion naira. That is the tip of the iceberg, but a glean into what is possible. There are youths who can cut checks for millions of naira. There are non-youths who can and are willing to donate in hundreds of millions. There are diaspora Nigerians who will gladly be part of this. The regular citizen is tired of the old order, and this creates an opportunity that youths can cash in on. My own check is ready when you come calling. My advocacy is that the waking lion should not be coward. It should rise up, and it is not a time for small dreams. You can do much more holding the power than holding the streets. So while peaceful protests will remain an important tool in the bouquet, the ultimate is to shoot for electoral power in 2023. And the time to start is now. The old order is wise and strong. It will fight back. But nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. When you wake up, it's your morning. Can you hear the cock crowing outside? To paraphrase Bola Awoshi Kaoyileye, you cannot hashtag a new Nigeria into existence. Hashtag Sorosuke can only be but a beginning. Now it's time for the real work. Hashtag Ishebere. Are you ready? Yes, we're ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you a <are> youth? <laughs> I think all, all, all checks are ready. Hashtag <laughs> Ishebere. <laughs> we're ready. There are two things. Um, the current leaders got into power in their own 20s and have stayed in power for 60 straight years. And if you see the... Um, they say they're not leaders, but the people in, at the forefront of the answers struggle, they were... People in their 20s, I mean, um, Faust just celebrated his 30th, Apoko <laughs> Doctor just celebrated his 30th, showing that people under 30, you know, were the ones at the forefront, lawyers, doctors, donating, looking for funding in diaspora. So we are ready. And like you mentioned, we're not going to be served a la carte with power. We have mm -hmm. to, you know, start to work for it. And the people who have been in power for 60 years is because they didn't have anything to retire into. All they've known is politics and being in power, you know. So we have to also start to show them that we care about every Nigerian citizen and we're willing to, you know, accept them as our fathers and grandparents and, you know, allow them go and rest without, you know, necessarily fighting them, mm. you know, for power. But it is truly time for the youth to stay in power. I want to congratulate the NSARS protest uh, organizers. I want to congratulate all the people who made it work, uh, the Feminist Coalition. Um, it, it was wonderful. It was just incredible to watch how sophisticated they were. Mm. And I, I, I see that at some point they had to start the Sorosuke radio. Mm -hmm. And then they, when the account was blocked, they had to switch to cryptocurrency. It was just marvelous. And just as uh, Bolaho has advocated today, I just want to back, you know, reiterate what he said that true power is in, the vote, in, in voting. We now must convert the success, the organization, the sophistication of the NSAS protest 
into organizing for 2023. You know what? Balaho has said down behind you, check is ready for you. Can't pick it from him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, just as a lot of Nigerians who are tired already of the old order mm -hmm. are saying, now whispering in corners and in high places, we are ready for the new order. So you must go get the power now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 um, they have to scale up what they've done at the NSAS level, mm -hmm. which I think is where the problems are going to be. Um, to all the funding and all the sophistication right. has to be scaled up to national level. Mm. And that's where there's really some the work challenge. to do that may be a bit of a challenge before 2023. If not, I don't see much of a challenge in terms of numbers, some ordinary funding like my, my man here who has his check ready, and actually I have my own ready as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know it's not much, but I have... I, I will, <laughs> yes. No, if you, Bola already did the mathematics. I mean, if you had yeah, 5,000, 5, 5, yeah. so yeah. in you that way, I can double yes. mine. Then do we Ten, need to, I'm ready. Do we need to scale to national? Why not start from the grassroots? Why do I say that? Because the people who were used to truncate the protest were from the grassroots. We call them good laws. They, they say we should call them good names. They're good boys. You They're know, good yeah. boys. <laughs> well, well, well I, I, won't, I won't speak because I'm coming with that on my advocacy. Yeah. So I'm not going really? to say whether they were good boys or, or really, good boys um, for now. Um, while all of this is good, I think I buy into Chuka's um, line um, because you can start at um, the local level and um, the problem remains the same. Mm. We have a lot of young people in the state houses of assembly. Mm. You know, what are they doing? Mm. You know? Uh, so once you get in there, you are compromised. So you need to take it because we operate a big local government where the president is the local government chairman. Yeah. And uh, if care is also not taken, while we were Sorosokin, the INEC chairman was reappointed. Yes, exactly. yes. And yes. so, and, we had... and so, <laughs> INEC has presently constituted. It's compromised if, already. If you do not, if you do not truly push the status quo, nothing will change. The same INEC that told you we have, um, we had a... Um, but, but, but you see, Libby, we, it's, we it's had the same INEC that conducted Edo. Edo election, the first question you should ask yourself mm. in Edo election is, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. There are a lot of things that, that went, that that, that okay. went yes. under, okay. just the like 2015 election. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, because it produced a seemingly desired result, you felt, oh, we all went to sleep. We all went to sleep. Yeah. And yeah. so, for Edo, oh, yes, that's what you want to see. And so, yes. No, but, but at the end of the day, you ask yourself, why is it that we're talking about INEC in American election coming up now? We're discussing we don't the electoral discuss empire. Election in Ghana election, do you discuss yeah. the electoral empire? In South African election, do you discuss the electoral empire? Yeah. You're discussing electoral empire because... It's you know, that's a clearing house equation. for leadership in Nigeria. Electoral right. reforms is actually very key if we're going to head anywhere. Right. The earlier we realize that the world's biggest power is the youth, the better for us all. I speak of the hungry uh, people who've been looting. Uh, I call it looter's paradise right up to the break.